How did the stunts in the Mission Impossible movies go from this to this? It's a franchise known for its crazy practical stunt work, but there was an obvious point where each new film was defined by at least one death-defying act on film. And then each new film stunt seems to have to top the last one. <laughs> so when did this shift happen and why? And just how will Dead Reckoning Part 1 stack up in terms of jaw-droppingly crazy stunts? Your mission? should you choose to accept it, is to watch this here internet video where I'm about to break it all down. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. You might not think 1996 was that long ago, and you might be wrong, at least in terms of the high tech that was key to the original Mission Impossible. CRT, floppy disks, modems. In action movie terms, 1996 was a long time ago, folks, and if the tech doesn't make it clear, Ethan Hunt's big action set pieces do because what we see here is a long way off from modern Mission Impossible, and the evolution could not be more stark. Directed by Brian De Palma, the 1996 Mission Impossible was meant to be a continuation of the classic TV series, Mission Impossible 1 pitting Ethan Hunt against a traitorous mole within the IMF. This movie may be pretty damn old for a still-running franchise, but it has one of the most emblematic images for Mission Impossible. Ethan Hunt suspended by wires in the CIA's most dangerous high-security vault, aka the White Room Seat. The trick is, Hunt has to be completely silent, maintain temperature, and not touch the floor or he'll trip the alarm sensors, all while the guy holding his rope gets tickled by a mouse. As Cruz tells it years later, the scene was really hard to do and he kept falling and hitting the floor and director Brian De Palma wanted to move on or split the scene into two different shots. I just went down on the floor and I, I didn't touch and I remember I was there, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't touch. And I was holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, and I'm sweating and I'm sweating. And then he just keeps rolling. While the scene isn't part of the big action set piece in the third act, that stunt involves a bullet train and a helicopter crash, a lot more CG work than you'll see elsewhere in the series. But it's this scene, the wire scene, that became the most iconic stunt scene of the movie. So gauging on where the franchise has gone since this, it's a totally different kind of stunt. Mission Impossible 2 followed up in 2000, shifting from De Palma to famed action director John Woo. The movie's action stylings departed from the first movie big time, but it still didn't come close to the franchise's hugest, most dangerous stunts still to come. This movie has two big stunt scenes. The first is when we first catch up with Ethan doing a little free climbing in Utah. He launches himself from ledge to ledge and nearly falls, but makes it to the top. Tom Cruise did actually do this with digitally removed cables, though Wu insisted there be two stunt doubles for climbing and the overhang stunt. This scene doesn't have a lot to do with the plot besides to show off how cool the main character is, him and the sweet, sick wraparound sunglasses, obviously. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Another major stunt was performed by Tom Cruise, giving John Woo even more safety anxiety, no doubt, and it's the knife fight that gets perilously close to a full-on eye stabbing. A real knife was used, and that is Tom, but to make it stop a quarter inch from his eyeball, it was connected to a very carefully measured cable, while Cruise insisted his scene partner, Doug Ray Scott, fight with all his might in the scene. Apparently, there was a lot of chafing between Cruz wanting to do all his own stunts and Wu being very, very against that. He was uh, so stubborn, you know, he said, no, 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 this is the way I... is Mission Impossible 3 marked another director change, this time with J.J. Abrams on his first feature film. And if there is a shift from what Mission Impossible used to be to what it is now, the shift is a gradual one, and J.J. Abrams coming aboard seems to be the first step in that. It was the most expensive movie by a first-time feature film director, and it shows. Do it. 
Despite that fact, it may also be one of the most grounded Mission Impossibles, meaning the stunts are somewhat more realistic things that could happen. Again, Tom Cruise was adamant about performing stunts, even taking a 50-foot freefall to make the building leap scene look more realistic, according to action director Vic Armstrong in movie production notes. But perhaps the biggest action piece is the bridge attack scene when Ethan has to outrun a missile and later hangs from his fingers from the blown up bridge. When escaping the missile, he gets lifted by the force and slammed into a car so hard he shatters a window. The effect was achieved with the help of digitally removed wires again, but Tom Cruise really took that slam, which could have seriously injured him if it wasn't done just right. Point is, this is where that shift in the action starts. What's more hardcore than crazy cliff free climbing? Go out, run a freaking missile, and be sure to shoot it practically. Both of these stunts are still within the realm of reason for big budget action movies, and as you'll see in a minute, the franchise was already headed to uncharted territory. <laughs> 2011's Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is in many opinions the time when the Mission Impossible movies really took their stunts to the next level as Tom Cruise began his one-upsman competition against his rival, Tom Cruise, to constantly achieve the most dangerous, unbelievable activity possible. Directed by Brad Bird, with a script by Josh Applebaum, Andre Nemec, and uncredited rewrites from eventual franchise writing and directing mainstay Christopher McQuarrie, Ethan Hunt and his IMF team have to go without resources or backup in an incredibly dangerous mission to clear their names after being blamed for a bombing of the Kremlin. There's plenty of chases and fights throughout, but the jewel in the crown for MI4 is crews climbing up and sprinting down the tallest skyscraper on Earth, the Burj Khalifa. He did this without physical help and even took a photo sitting on the top without a harness or anything, just sitting there, not screaming or freaking out, which is what most people, including myself, would do. All the filming was achieved through strategically placed IMAX cameras, save for one super close-up shot of Cruise on a skyscraper replica. Again, with this stunt, we as fans can see the stunt escalation really start to take shape. The other important addition here is Christopher McQuarrie, who is now Tom Cruise's partner in crime when filming these films. And at this point, it's clear that they're definitely trying to top what they did in the last one, meaning they'd need to do something pretty crazy to top this. Your line's not long enough! You probably know where I'm going when I bring up the centerpiece stunt from Mission Impossible Rogue Nation from 2015. And yes, it's obviously when Ethan Hunt needs to board a plane that's already taken off, so naturally Tom Cruise just hangs off the side of the plane. For real, it's a real plane taking off somewhere over 200 miles per hour and Tom Cruise is dangling off it with nothing but a safety cable and his fingertips to hold him in place. This one always makes me laugh when I rewatch it because of the sheer ridiculousness of this. this this is what happens when you don't leave for the airport like three extra hours early. Not only did he actually volunteer to do this, he did this eight times in a row, which is probably way more than anyone was asking for because he's Tom Cruise. He's about this life now for some reason. Even if you aren't afraid of heights, I'll bet you're still quite scared of drowning. I know I am. Rogue Nation is not unusual in the Mission Impossible canon because there is more than one major stunt, of course. In another scene, Ethan Hunt is essentially in a high security underwater vault trying to replace a computer chip. This sequence required Cruz to be able to hold his breath for a long time in order to pull it off, six minutes at a time, in fact. Christopher McQuarrie stepped into the director's role in this outing and, like Cruz, is really into filming these big risky scenes practically. This made for a very memorable and anxiety-inducing moment overall, and by this point in the franchise is certainly deep in extreme death defiance territory. Quick break, when we come back, we'll look at the escalating stunts in Mission Impossible Fallout and Dad Reckoning Part 1. Be right back. And now, we're flying helicopters and doing halo jumps. No big deal. 
Halo, of course, means high altitude, low opening, and it also means one of Tom Cruise's most jaw-dropping stunts ever in Mission Impossible Fallout. Once again directed by Christopher McQuarrie, early on in this movie, Ethan Hunt needs to infiltrate what else in this series? A huge expensive party somewhere in Europe with his forced partner, August Walker, who he also has to save. Tom Cruise, of course, does his own stunts for this, leaping out of the plane at an altitude so high you have to wear an oxygen mask. The shot is actually three shots with special equipment invented to make it work, according to the movie's home release special features. To qualify to even do this, crews needed to prepare with over 100 skydiving jumps, as well as several lower altitude rehearsal jumps with camera and safety personnel, and the movements had to be very precise to get crews at the right spot to be captured on camera. On top of this, this shot happens at a very particular time of day, leaving just three minutes every 24 hours for it to even be attempted. Almost just as impressive is the helicopter chase scene where Ethan Hunt has to climb up a rope, fall down the rope, climb back up the rope, fight the guy inside the chopper, then fly the chopper in the big chase scene, and once again, Tom Cruise did every part of this practically, including flying the helicopter. If there is a zenith of the Cruise Macquarie Mission Impossible partnership, it's Fallout. Of course, there's no way they can top this, right? When that moment happens, we're all it's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And lastly, we have the new Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, once again directed by Christopher McQuarrie. I've already seen it, I'm not going to spoil any plot points for you, but we need to discuss the one stunt that you'll walk away remembering most. Toward the end of the movie, Ethan Hunt needs to get aboard a train and help new IMF recruit Grace retrieve a key that determines who will be able to control the most powerful AI ever made and effectively control the world. Benji's plan is for Ethan to jump onto the train as it slows down around a bend, but the antagonist Gabriel killed the engineers and essentially sent the train barreling down the tracks at max speed out of control, so Benji's plan is a bust. He tells Ethan to ride his motorcycle up the mountain, which he does bewildered the whole way, finally realizing Benji means for him to drive the motorcycle off the side, leap from it, and parachute into the train. This is hard because there are rocks everywhere, it's not a good angle to deploy the chute, also it's a freaking mountain and it's a runaway train. With no choice, Tom Cruise actually rides off the mountain at high speed, leaps, drops the motorcycle, and breathlessly glides through the mountain crags until he pulls the chute. It's awesome, it's a stop breathing and just stare moment, and I wished it had gone on longer. I could see why it didn't. The team crafted an incredible and forgettable shot, and I'm pretty worried one-upping this will be how Tom Cruise dies in the future because, wow, it's really something special. We don't know what's coming for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2, but the plot of Part 1 does make it clear a deep sea dive to a sunken Russian submarine needs to occur at some point, and it seems likely high flying will happen again given Tom Cruise's track history between this franchise and Top Gun. It will be interesting to see what the Mission Impossible team does in Dead Reckoning Part 2. What do you think Ethan Hunt's final stunt will be? Thanks for watching. I'm Kim Horcher, and for more Mission Impossible, Here's the Mission Impossible timeline leading up to Fallout, so check that out, and don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. This video will self-destruct in five seconds. Just kidding, no it won't. It might though. No it won't. Could.